All right. So, the group of you have returned to Elderthorn. You've been spending some time tying up loose ends, doing a little bit of shopping, getting the information of what's transpired in the Taltha while you've been gone for a not indiscernible amount of time. You learned that during your absence, the town was subjected to an attempted raid by a band of gnolls. It was successfully repelled, due in no small part to the efforts of Blackburn. There was some degree of guilt upon that uh, from the part of Aeolus, who is an active member of Blackburn, and he was not here for the defense of the Taltha, but he was assuaged by Storm Surge. You had some time to kill, as the group of you learned of some happenings going on in the Witchlight Marshlands, north of Armskirk, and potentially as far north as Fellhold Refuge. Uh, Captain Stormsurge has agreed to allow your experimental troop to continue to do jobs outside of the norm for Blackburn, provided that it's still in the benefit of Elderthorn in the grand scheme of things. Although these issues did not feel terribly pressing, and the group of you decided to hang around in town for the Shield Meet celebration. This happens once every four years, immediately following Midsummer's Day, uh, outside of the traditional calendar, and you had a lot of downtime. You purchased some items, uh, coerced the Blackburn Watch into a display of strength in a brief combat, and have otherwise been occupying your time in and about town. We are beginning today with the morning of shield meat. As you all awaken on the day, the air is already pregnant with excitement. The sun is just barely risen over the pinwood and is casting a warm golden glow on the Talfa. Uh, at some point during your sleep, Buka has entered your rooms and, uh, and opened all of the windows, allowing the aroma of fresh pastries and roasting meats already uh, filling the air to waft through the open portal. This mingling with the sweet scent this is mingling with the sweet scent of blooming flowers in the window boxes. You have a small breakfast and make your way out to the main road from the faded gate towards Cathedral Square. The lively sounds of celebration assail your ears. Laughter and chatter of townsfolk. There's the rhythmic beat of drums somewhere in the distance, and cheerful tunes of minstrels create a joyous symphony intermingled with conversations and exclamations from the townsfolk nearby. There are colorful banners and ribbons that dance in the breeze, adorning the buildings in a festive splendor. Despite the early hour of the morning, the festivities are already well and truly begun. Stalls and booths line the square, offering a myriad of delights. At first glance, after you cross the Troll Run, a group of you spot a booth offering some type of succulent, glazed-looking meat on a stick. Across from that is a merchant displaying vibrant fabrics, with summer cuts to dress the part for the day. Further down, you spot a series of trinkets and dolls hung with care to be prizes for some type of game. Here and there, individuals are already half-coated in small sparkling confetti that sticks to their clothes and skin. The joy on their faces adds to the jubilant atmosphere. There are children running about laughing and blending with the barking call of buskers and performers. As you approach the heart of the festivities, the grandeur of the occasion becomes evident. Blackburn keeps stands tall, adorned with garlands and ribbons. It's clear both from the appearance and, in some of your cases, uh, experience as recruits that the, recruit, the current recruits were up until the wee hours of the morning, likely on ropes washing and scrubbing the stones in preparation for today. In front of the Temple of the Faithful, a stage is set for performances and a colorful array of tents host various activities. The tantalizing aroma of a feast being prepared for later hangs in the air. 
The festivities are yours to enjoy. What would you like to do? Oh, he's getting some of that succulent meat on a stick. Certainly. Um, <laughs> as you pass really good. by, um, the individual that's proffering it uh, charges you five silver for a stick. It is mm -hmm. bacon. It's called bacon de goose. It is a piece of succulent roast goose, carefully wrapped in crispy, smoky bacon strips, delivering a perfect blend of rich flavors with each savory bite. Mark off five silver. Oh man. Oh yeah, if you didn't have breakfast, you're going to be hungry, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to get three of those things. Yeah, sure. Donan is probably going to look for the toughest um, strength challenge. Like, I don't know how you call it when you slam down a hammer and it goes up to reach a bell. Yeah, a strongman contest. Um, yeah. Make me a... If there's an equivalent to that. Yeah, sure. Uh, make me an investigation check to look around. Ellie's gonna hand Willem one of the sticks and tell him to reverse engineer it. Willem's not present. Figure it out. Oh, he's not with us. Oh. Nope. Uh, <gasps> from the moment the group of you returned to Elderthorn, Willem has been doing work for Blackburn. Or with some other group on some other job. Okay. Growing up. He's, he is the only member of the party that is currently a recruit. Oh. Um, Dunnan, uh, you take a look around. You be positive you're, you'll find something around here. You don't see anything in a moment. You do see two things that catch your eye. Um, off to the eastern side of uh, Cathedral Square, um, it looks like sand has been sort of placed. Um, and then on top of the sand, a bed of hay such to sort of cushion the ground slightly. Um, mm -hmm. And then arrayed along one end is a series of long poles, each of them ranging in length from about three feet to close to 20, 25 feet in yeah. different increments. And they, they taper very slightly towards a rounded tip. Um mm -hmm. You've spent some time in Elderthorn. You recognize this is uh, the setup for the, a caber toss to be happening later in the day that is scaled mm -hmm. for people of different races. So if you are a small stature, obviously, you, it would be unfair to have you toss a 25-foot pole. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are someone like Grogron, it'd be unfair to have you toss a 3-foot. Um, so you, you recognize it doesn't look like they're doing anything yet, but they are taking sign-ups at the moment, if you'd like to sign up for it. Yeah, definitely. He okay. would definitely go over there. Okay. Uh, there is no charge for the sign-up for the caper toss. It is happening mm -hmm. at high noon. Um, uh, as you head over, it looks like uh, one of the waitresses from Bukas is currently manning the booth along with a member of Blackburn, to whom you're not familiar. So, yeah. You think you're gonna take on Captain Storm Search? It's not gonna do well. Oh, Captain Storm Search is gonna participate. Oh the no, I'm champion. You're not gonna absolutely. Win no one. Oh, we will see me about that, and he rubs his hands. I'm definitely gonna participate. Oh, that sounds Kelly's like a gonna challenge. Sign up too. Just and for fun. While I'm while I'm standing there, there can I look at the particip participation list? Who is on there? Certainly. Can I take a quick glance? Uh, sure, make me, a, make me a perception check. Since they, they have it, so you're sort of reading upside down and at an angle. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Um, so you see a few names that you recognize and some that you don't. Um, mm -hmm. a moment, let me pull up my NPCs. Wrong list. Um, so you see uh, currently on it is uh, Trum Alum. Uh, you know that name. Uh He's the butcher. Uh, you see, yeah. Andre uh, is competing as well. Ooh, uh, you see, Bugram sure. is also listed, yeah. likely some type of rivalry, rivalry between the two of them. Um, and you see, uh, Lieutenant uh, Lori Kinney is also uh, signed up. Mm. Uh, Lori. There's about a dozen yeah. other names you don't recognize at first glance. Looks like a tough 
competitor list. That's gonna be fun. All right, done and fire appeared. I'm so also gonna this. So you, Hellerast, and Tang, did you say you wanted to sign up as well? Yes. All right, and Tang, you are all entered into the caber toss to happen at high noon. Um, takes you a few minutes as you sort of make the rotation. You do spot one other game that looks like it's vaguely strength-based. Um, mm -hmm. Lennon, that draws your attention. Um, as you come up, the busker is shouting it. Uh, come claim your bounties. Uh, one throw per purchase. Whatever you knock over and crack, it's yours to keep. Uh, come join the bag cross bounty. Um, you have to throw a weighted bag. It feels like it's mm -hmm. clay or cornmeal or sand or some mixture therein in these bags at clay jars wow. that are arrayed um, about 15 feet away uh, behind the, the booth. Um, whatever jar you break, if you break a jar, um, you get the prize inside. Uh, you have no idea I have to step up. Sorry, I have to step away for 10 minutes. Can we come back yeah, to sure. me? Yeah. So, I'm sorry. You rotate back around. Anyone else? What else are you looking for? I mean, uh, I think Steve Creed would beeline it to the performances mm -hmm. after eating some of that bacon goose. Bacon goose? <laughs> As uh, you head over towards the uh, performance uh, stage, uh, there is a small um, uh, chart that has been written in, in chalk of uh, different things happening throughout the day. And then the evening is uh, penciled out um, for the fireworks display that has been scheduled on that Kelpip um, has scheduled for the festivities. Um, uh, a bit after noon, there is a beard and mustache competition. Um, uh, earlier, uh, about 10 a.m., uh, about two hours time from right now, uh, there is a lottery to win one of the town's outer properties. Um, and uh, they're currently on the stage is people taking lotto entries for anyone who would like to participate in it. Yeah, um, uh, there's not currently anyone actually doing a performance at the moment. It sounds like the minstrels and music are coming mostly from buskers and street performance dotted mm -hmm. around the area. Um... I think I'd like to enter the raffle and then maybe set up to busk myself afterwards. Certainly. Um, uh, you head up. Uh, currently, Cedar is um, selling the tickets for the mm -hmm. raffle. How many would you like? They are 20 silver apiece. Uh, okay. We have plenty more entries available. Um. How about I take three entries? Three entries, okay. So that's 60 silver, right? Uh, 60 silver, correct. Yeah. You see other people sort of queue up behind you and purchase their own tickets for the entries. Mm -hmm. um, and then you said you wanted to set up and do a little bit of busking yourself. Maybe yeah, like, maybe. uh, maybe if there's a good spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's very clear that the typical rules concerning Cathedral Square of no performances are in clearly lifted for the day because it is a paved area as opposed to the Market March, which is dirt. Um, uh, you easily find some space, um, to sort of squeeze yourself in. Go ahead and roll me, uh, three performance checks. Okay. I'm going to enhance ability myself again. Okay. So are you gonna just busk for an hour or so? Uh, I I assume like uh I think uh if there was like a, a notable performance coming up, I would wait until that would start. I think. Like if there was a show to catch or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe just, just play till noon until uh, Dunnan and them are called up to their thing, because Siegfried would at least want to see that as well. Certainly. All right. yeah. uh, go ahead and make me a, a three performance checks. If you want to use enhanced ability the entire time, you'll need to use two of them, I will say. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do that. Oh, that's, Mar yeah, yeah, mark off two yeah. slots. Yeah, yeah I, I, really, I forgot that it doesn't 
knocked on the spell slots. Uh, anyway, uh, here we go. Three performance checks. One. Two. Three. Great rolls. Jeez. Yeah. Um, over the course of the time, people tend to be remarkably generous. Um, uh, you do make uh, close to 90 silver during this. Um, there people that you've never seen in the town previously, despite growing up in the vicinity, you imagine are from all of the different farmlands surrounding the space um, that you've just never interacted with, are very friendly with their coin and their compliments. Um, roll me a d100 as well. As you are playing, you rolled so well, people are enjoying and staying near you and having conversations, which you pick up some information. 64. Is that what that was? Yeah, 64. Yep, 64. So, uh, you hear a conversation about a wine that's being sold. It's called, uh, apparently, uh, Danawas, um, is out of this world. People are, like, wondering what's in it. They've never tasted anything like it. It's not like any grip they've ever thought of. Um. Uh, you pick up that line. Okay. Uh, from one of the conversations is happening. Um, I think after I was performing and probably just talking to these people, um, I would go back to the the property raffle, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would use eighty more out of the ninety coins to buy four, four more, more tickets. So you have seven yeah. total. Yep, yeah. no. and then keep okay. keep the ten gold, the ten silver okay. that's left over, yeah. and then I would go check out that wine because I was like, hmm, done and probably thirsty after the caber toss. Uh, you are able to find the booth. Um, each glass okay. is eight silver. Um, okay. We'll come back to that. Um, okay. Uh, what else is anyone else looking for? I want to go to the clothing shop. Ah, oh, perfect. Um, there is a, a tanned skin gentleman with a beautiful nose piercing that has a small, very fine chain that connects to uh, piercing upon uh, his left ear. Um, dressed in vibrant purple, um, very small trim of gold here and there, just to add a little bit of touch and class, and the colors mesh beautifully together. Sort of uh, comes up to you, hello, you are so wonderful, uh, what can I do for you? Um, I, I fluff my feathers up a little bit, uh, and I ask if there are any, like, Streamers or strings that I can tie into my feathers. But of course. Yes. Um, uh, please. Uh, he lifts the gate to the, the front desk of his uh, booth and mm -hmm. proffers you inside um, and starts displaying uh, bolts of fabric. Please choose whichever catches your fancy and I shall cut some ribbons for you. Am I an option? As you glance around, you have uh, different fabrics in multiple colors. Uh, ev everything that you could possibly imagine uh, under the rainbow. Um, as you come up to a few of them and feel there's a very silk-like texture, it feels like uh, very tightly spun linen. Um, incredibly lightweight, very flowy, and fitting the summer atmosphere in which you are currently finding yourself. There's some that have patterned uh, leaf-like arrangements and others that are just a solid color. There's things in decorations of clay that are made out of heavier fabric and some are lighter fabric. Some that you would imagine immediately would be excellent for a good scarf for warmer weather to keep the sun off of your face, should you desire. Uh, scan for more wintry colors. Let's winter see if there's... Yeah. You find a a beautiful uh, sort of toffee and light blue uh, patterned uh, piece. It feels 
about medium weight. It doesn't feel terribly thick, um, but not um, summery in the very least. Might be good for a light cloak in a, a cooler weather. Um, as you profit, uh, you have excellent taste. Um, very kind taking to um, enchantments. Are you, if you are, seeking to augment this beyond my own skill set, uh, an excellent selection for waterproofing of a cloak of some kind. I, uh, not indicating that that is my selection. I would like some of this, please. Oh, ribbons? Cloak? Uh, Little garment? Tunic? Uh, Perhaps some leg warmers? I look down at my legs. Really get cold. Ah, of course. My apologies. Um. Uh, a hood, please. Of course. I would be happy to provide. May I make some measurements? I know. As he, um, uh, snaps his fingers and a small, uh, elastic, uh, uh, flexible tape appears and he starts taking measurements. I saw that you sort of made your feathering uh, poofier. Um, if you would be so kind to do so, I, I want to make sure that it would not stretch upon your usage of your own anatomy. I make myself maximally fluffy. As he takes some measurements. Um, Finally conclusive thing. I will have a wonderful hood ready for you in less than an hour's time. Thank you. How much will that be? It'll be 22 silver pieces. I nod. And then I say thank you and then I will be back. I pay half up front. Uh, you can mark off everything. Um, and uh, when you do collect, it is a beautifully cut hood he's taken care to uh the small amount of patterning that is within this fabric um he has taken care to make sure that upon the seams the patterning even matches up to the uh the other half of the hood where it has been stitched together um he's added a small drawstring at the front such because of its rather bulky nature to accommodate your floof um mm -hmm. such that it can be drawn a little bit more snugly for when there is not floof to be accommodated Okay. He's added a small um, capelet uh, that will drape along your shoulders, such to keep it in place while while moving around. Okay. I thank him very much for his work, and I give him a few of my feathers that came out from the day's preening in case he wants them for accents, for like hats or, or other items. These were wonderful. I will certainly use them, and I will sing your praises as I do. I go to find Heli. Uh, Aeolus, what are you looking for? Um, I think I'd start <clears throat> just checking out if there's any anything that doesn't have to do with brute strength. Certainly. Like, like a memory style event uh there's uh initially after making the rounds with dunnan um to find the caber toss um nearby there uh next to blackburn keep a scaffolding has been erected um as you sort of sit there while dunnan's conversing and uh trying to steal glances you spot the activity that's currently being held off of the scaffolding um, a busker is, uh, and the, the merchant, person running the stall, um, I don't know if they're technically a busker at that point, um, is, uh, only at, uh, uh, the five silver gets you a shot, uh, as many as you can take, hopefully, um, repeated attempts will be more costly, so do your best the first time, um, as you see, there is a small line, about six people at the moment, that are on different levels of the scaffolding that scale higher than the wall of Blackburn Keep at the moment. Um, and 
uh, each individual, as they come to the bottom, is presenting a ring back to the individual who is offering this activity. Each individual who purchases this entry to the Skyward Spectacle is given one of these rings and then ascends the scaffolding with a bow. No arrows on the bow, just a bow. Once they reach the top, at the designation of the person running up there, they jump from the 100 foot tall scaffolding and the ring feather falls them to the ground. Upon the activation of the ring, a number of targets appear in the air in random locations, and the individual must shoot these targets during their descent. Upon hitting the ground, the targets vanish, and a score is tabulated. Oh, shit. Um, uh, you, sir, would you like to? I would You know what? Get the high score for us today. Show up all of these youths. I see your your garments. Yeah. You're Blackburn, are you not? I am, but Demonstrate I don't think I'm... your your courage. Jump from a great height. Aim true. I mean, I don't know about setting a high score. Uh I'll ask one of my companions to be nearby so they can, you know. Revive me when I fall unconscious. Not necessary. Our rings do all of the work for you. Gently waft yourself through the ground. Upon touching yeah. the ground at the end of your descent, you are out of time. Sure, I'll try it. Pay five silver. I'll sign up. Go. You <clears throat> wait your turn one at a time. As you notice, um, as you are waiting and watching the other people go before you, uh, the... Targets never seem to appear in quite the same spot, and they are angled differently. They're never quite exactly facing the person who is currently descending. They are... Probably some of them are more difficult shots, some of them are less difficult shots. Seems like it varies. Um, people tend to get, seems like, about five. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Seems like the average seems in that, is in that four to five range. Um, eventually you are at the top, and soft wave of vertigo washes over you as you stare down at the paved stone of the cathedral square in front of you. Um, All right, your turn. Off you go. Don't worry, every time you draw back the bow, an arrow will appear. No risk to the crowd. Don't worry if you have to aim down. Oh. Well, that's fancy. It vanishes beyond the, the range. Huh. I'll have to take note of that. And Aeolus will get ready. Alright. On your mark. That's it. Leap. And you get a swift kick in the tuchus from this burly dwarf. Um, make me first an acrobatics check to determine the number of shots that you will have to try to make <laughs> during your descent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, now yeah. make a perception check to determine the number of targets you locate as you are twisting and turning and falling slowly in the air. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Um, as this is parkour. And turning, <laughs> uh, you manage to find a few targets. Um, are you? <laughs> You are proficient with short bows, I believe, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have proficiency in your dex save at the moment? I do. Okay. Um, just because that'll be your dex plus your proficiency. Um, go ahead and roll me five dexterity saving throws. Because that'll give us our basic attack roll. Okay. As you sort of twist and rotate, um, one target appears and you snag it. The second one... Uh, you manage to connect to just the edge of this sort of target, and you see as you find purchase with these um, ethereal arrows, uh, they hit, there's a ringing sound um, that you hear now that you are in the descent. 
um, and you feel a slight warming on the ring that has been pl placed upon your finger to provide the feather fall effect. Um, you miss two more, and you finally find purchase with your fifth one that you do find. Um, as you are descending, uh, before you know it, your feet touch the ground, and uh, upon your ring there is emblazoned uh, three little pips signifying your score. Ah, poor luck. Excellent attempt, though. Excellent attempt, young man. Yeah, I can't wait to see how everyone else does. You've not bested the high score, so no prize, but no shame in that. You did wonderfully, and you took the leap of faith. Aeolus will <laughs> nod, and then for the majority of the rest of the festival until his friends start to compete, he'll just <laughs> make rounds with those of Blackburn that may be on watch. Make a, make a perception check for me. Um, while you're making rounds, um, three things. Three other things catch your attention. Um, in addition to seeing uh, Siegfried currently busking, um, you see a some type of drinking competition where individuals are trying to drink all of the ale in a in this horn. It's ornate looking. It looks like a ram's horn. Um, uh, they're paying, and the the challenge seems to be to drink the entire horn in a single go. And no one's been successful yet. Um, sort of take note of that for your companion later. Uh, you also see a, a small booth. Uh, oh, you almost miss it um, near the edge. That uh, upon a velvet cushion there is what you're pretty sure is a shrunken head. Um, uh, that has a small coin slot in front of it. it looks doesn't look like anyone's currently running this booth, but um, you just take note of that. Um, now the rest. What are you looking for? Just trying to figure out what she can do without that eye. That would be fun, but not embarrassing. So she's like, looking at Aeolus do his thing, floating down on his gold ring. She's like, I would have loved to have done that before, but she's not sure she should do it now. You certainly, you she's looking attempt. forward to the caper toss. Okay. Um, um, you know what? Yeah, she will try just to see if she's still got anything. Okay. Um, the individual... Five silver, please. Uh, current high score is nine. Best of luck to you. Um, so go ahead and roll me an acrobatics and a perception check. Oh, shit. Oh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and make me five uh, dexterity checks. Okay. There's a plus three bonus, so AC. Okay. Dexterity saves or dexterity checks? Just de de dexterity checks, because your proficiency bonus, I believe, is a three, correct? Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah so. All right, you are able to find three targets. Uh, your seven and the natural one definitely miss. Um, yeah, you uh, So you manage to tie Aeolus' score. You do not beat the high score, so you do not win the prize. Eh. Oh, well, that was fun. Yeah. But, you um, like the floating down. You are applauded by the contestants politely in a nice golf clap as you uh, come down. <laughs> and, uh, the other thing that catches your attention, um, seemingly going in waves as there are enough people to sign up for it, is uh, something called a feat of feasting. Uh, as it sounds, this is an eating competition. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, it seems like uh, every time there is at least 10 signups, um, another one, uh, another round of this begins every, about five minutes after that point, if you choose to okay. participate, or if you choose to wait and participate later. Um, she's gonna wait until after the, uh, toss, the caber toss, just in case she doesn't want to have to lose her cookies Certainly. while she's tossing, but she oh. will definitely <laughs> sign up for that right afterwards. Certainly. All right. Um... Siegfried, one of the things that uh, you sort of pause your activities for to listen in on uh, is a contest held on stage um, uh, just before the drawing for the property um, is a, a contest 
called A Revelry in Rhyme. Every time there's two individuals who wish to participate um, for about an hour period, uh, this goes on. Uh, any person can challenge one other person that's also involved in the competition, and whoever sur um, succeeds gets to stay on stage, and the other person is escorted off. Um, contest is what one rule. Every phrase of utterance must be in rhyme. As you've sort of been paying attention, it seems like it takes the form of mild insults towards each other. Um... <laughs> And then after each individual has made three utterances, the crowd picks the winner by applause or by boos. <laughs> yeah, um, Siegfried, Siegfried will sign up for that. Okay, certainly. Um, as you are listening in on the convert competition, so to speak, it seems like it's more just for entertainment and clout as opposed to a particular degree of prize um as you your turn finally comes up and you ascend the stage the individual uh i'm gonna quickly enhance myself again on the way up to the stage an individual a sort of pot-bellied goblin sort of proffers to you to make the first move okay and with a, a nice gesture acknowledging your presence on the stage mm -hmm. And do I have to say something, or do I roll yeah. something? I, I, no. I don't you know to, to You have to say something. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't think of that on my feet. Uh, <laughs> Come on! Uh, I'm not a performer. I, I, I can't think. Uh, I'll just... Welcome the goblins to the stage, and welcome him to Elder Thor night. Hope he's having fun. Um, I hope he doesn't get too much sun. <laughs> ah, okay. There you go. <laughs> and his skin turns greener and he gets meaner. Well, I must declare your rhymes aren't great. <laughs> no, they aren't. You should stick to st singing. At least that I don't hate. I just forfeit. I don't know if I can keep going. <laughs> the crowd gives you a, yeah. a half-hearted booing as yeah. the, the goblin sort of tr uh, plots around with his pot belly, sort of swing swinging it around uh, in victory as a another yeah. individual comes up to participate. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, let's stick to singing. I'm not a comedian. <laughs> um, presently, it is time for the caber toss. Uh, I at least uh, bought some of that wine before going back to the caber toss. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, mark off the silver for each glass of wine. How much did you want to purchase? If if how much for a bottle? Uh, a bottle is uh, forty two silver. Um, I'll buy a bottle. Okay. Mark off bottle, um, and that is uh, six horns of wine. So I'm down to 76 silver and six horns of Den was wine. Yeah. Um, six servings, effectively. Um, not large bottles. <laughs> They're clearly festival bottles. Um, yeah. All right. The group of you, your various things, take care of you. Assemble for the caber toss. Um, uh, Aeolus, uh, I think you were still halfway joining us. Did you want to also participate in the caber toss? I will watch. Um, before everyone walks up, Aeolus is going to pat uh, Tonin on the shoulder, and he's going to cast Tidence on him. Give him hell. Give him for me? I'm a competitive guy. I'm not going to pull out my punches. As uh, all of the competitors are sort of lined up um, along the far side, away from the crowd, uh, an individual approaches each of them. Uh, hello. Uh, 
Looks to be a shorter halfling individual. Uh, you're not quite familiar with him. And uh, walking next to them is Kelpin. All right. To, in the spirit of fair competition, if one will be throwing appropriate to their weight. It's the only way we can do this fairly, as I don't think anyone wants to go run to throw something that I'd be throwing. I think that's the fair way to do it. It's the way we've been doing it. So, in that interest, I'm going to come along and weigh each of you. And I'm going to assign you a tag. You must have this tag to throw your caper. You have four throws to accrue the best possible average of all of your throws. Your lowest one is excused. Everyone has a mistake here and there, and that's fine. So your best three of your four attempts will be averaged together to get your final score. Now, some of you know this already. It sort of glances at the the tall and just remarkably dressed down Captain Storm Surge. Um, I wish you all the best of luck. And in that pursuit, there will be no cheating of any sort. No outside assistance from anybody. Kelp appears to ensure nobody's quaffed any potions of strength or uh, nimbleness or anything like that. It's a good, fair competition. As he sort of goes down and assigns everyone their tags based on your weight class. All right. Start off. Uh, a few individuals make their throws. Um, seems like this is a competition of raw strength. Um, presently, uh, Aeolus, roll me a d6. One. Uh, that would be... Dunnan. It is your turn. You are called up. Done right. in Firebeard. Pierre. You hear his mom. Ooh, old 20 is bugging out on me. There we go. Uh, it is your turn to make your attempts. Your tag, please. As you present it to the thing. Ah, number 17. Select this caber here. Sort of pats it for a moment. And uh, Kelpip right. will examine you. One moment, please. See Kelpip pass his hand over you for a moment. He is good. And have at it. We will collect your caber after every toss, so that's such that you might attempt to get. Oh, All right. let's, get, let's get this thing flying. All right. For your first throw, go ahead and give me an athletics check. Pretty good. An excellent throw from the the new competitor. All right. I can do better. That's just a warm up. Measure out the distance. All right. Next throw. As the caber is brought back to you. Um, second attempt. Ah, slight improvement. We might have a competition for you, Captain Storm Surge. Let's hear the. I think the hang of you. Right, Extra. Excellent. Yeah. Ah, oh, it looks like his muscles are getting a little bit sore. Hopefully, that will be dropped as his worst throw yet. Um, we have right. one more, Mister Firebeard. Make it count. Ah, your strength has deserted you, sir. Deserted mm. you. Too little ale to more, uh, today, it seems. So, you have 23, 24, and 18. Very low rolls, man. 12, 13. Oh. Uh, 4, 3, 18. Your score is... No, that's wrong.
Uh, 21.6 is your score. Well, not, not half bad. Not bad at all. All right. Uh, a few more individuals go. Um, one of the younger members of Blackburn uh, that has entered the competition scores abysmally low. Lowest you've seen so far. Their average is 12.2. Um, but uh, they're, they're gracious in what is obvious defeat to them. Um, Lori does not do much better. Assigned uh, her caber. Uh, she scores 16.7. Um, uh, eventually, the uh, next one of you up. Uh, Aeolus, roll me a d4, please. Two. Uh, that would be Teng's turn. As the half the sort of brussels up you. Your turn, miss. That's uh, a lovely hood you have. Um, just don't get it caught on the caber. Um, number. Fantastic. Uh, this caber right here. Young lady. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Thank him, and I go to pick up the caber. Heft the weight for a moment. Um, it's nowhere near as large as Dunham's was, but in the spirit of fair competition, it was made. It was selected specifically for you. Um, okay. Go ahead and make an athletics check for me for your first throw. Yeah. You got some muscles in there. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. As your paper is brought back to you. Next throw. When you're ready, man. Ah. Uh, come on. You got to show up, uh, Lieutenant Lori. Don't let her bet you. <laughs> Third throw. Okay. Re reset my feet and ruffle my feathers and try again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh, it looks like she stumbled. I'm sorry, it counts. It went forward. Uh, don't worry, your worst one gets dropped. It's okay, everyone makes a mistake. Final throw. <laughs> Final score of 11.3 for Miss Tengmum. An excellent competition. Give her a round of applause, folks. All right. Uh, presently... The last of your company that has signed up. Hellrest. It is your turn. Alright, just gonna walk up and get her caber. You hear Gogo -Go is... today. Go out and get him! Do great. <laughs> so give him a wink with the bad eye. Well, I don't I've ever heard Gogron -Go shout. <laughs> so she'll take her caber. She'll stand there, and she'll square her shoulders and shake out her arms and it, it just feels good about it. And then she'll take her first toss. 20. Yeah, I was a great throw! Great throw! Ah, uh, well. She's got more power than most. Look at that throw! My gosh, what a strong start for our competitor. Alright. She'll center herself again. Go for it. Oh, shit. Oh, looks like she pulled something on that one. Don't worry. You have the one that gets dropped. Let's show, let's see some more like that first throw. As your next okay. one is brought back to you. There, there we, we go. go. Back in the groove. That was excellent form. Look at that. Last one. Yeah, once more. Ah, we knew all knew that yeah. we knew that one was just a fluke. She must have Absolutely. stepped on a rock or something. She went great. All right, some real competition for you this week, uh, this uh, year, Captain Storm Surge. So let's see. <laughs> Twenty-seven. She'll go back and 24. give Gogren a high five. Twenty-five point six. You beat Dunnan. By a long shot. Yeah. Right. Um, Great work. 
three other people. It's for the bloody mad dogs. Three other people continue. Um, and uh, presently, the only competitor left is Captain Storm Surge as the defending champion. Aeolus, roll me a history check. In the time that you've been with Blackburn, as the most seasoned, not because you're an old man, just because you are more experienced within the watch. Um, <laughs> don't misconstrue season. You've not seen Captain Storm Surge get in a fight previously. And you weren't here at the defense of Elderthorn. You've heard of him getting in fights, and it's a sight to behold. As he steps forward and sort of removes his tunic carefully, you can see, for the older gentleman that he is, he's remarkably well-muscled. As uh, he is presented with the caber uh, for his weight class, you see him roll his shoulders back for a moment um, and give a bellowing war cry. Um, you see his limbs take on this uh, tinge of power behind them. The muscles bulge. The veins pop. Um, he is raging. I knew it. A cheater. <laughs> There's no outside help. Yeah. No, no one from the crowd can help you. Um, and he is going to make his first athletics check with advantage. I've switched his sheet off of Whisper as well. Oh, holy shit. About 17. Dear God. As, with a scream as he launches this thing good degree of distance. Wow, what a throw! That'll be great! Then it's just baffled. It's just, just mutters, does he have giant blood in him or what? Sort of looks over at you, Dunn, and you thought you could take my title from me? Takes the caber again as it's brought back to him and does a second sort of like two steps and the launch um, he is not going to take advantage. He is going to eschew that. I believe it's Forceful Blow. Yeah. And he is going to use Forceful Blow. Uh, replacing his advantage with an effect. As he launches this caber a great distance. Uh, straight roll. Oh. Come on, not a one. Ah, oh, he's fine. Uh, we are getting humbled. <laughs> the third throw, uh, he will go back to normal. Bad roll. And the final roll. Enter. Yeah. On the final roll, Aeolus just smirks and he wants to. He wants to cast Levitate on the caber. Okay. Make me a sleight of hand check. Does Levitate have verbal okay. and somatic material components? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Make me one hell of a sleight of hand check. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. What's the range on Levitate? 60 feet. Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if it was like a 10 foot range or something. Okay. As the, as he takes his stance, uh, takes his two steps and launches this last caber. Um, you see him sort of twist ah, and roll his shoulder for a moment, and the caber just sails past the range of the field and into the wall of Blackburn Keep for a moment, a good hundred feet from this force. Um, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's messing with the cabers? 
spell per... Oh, I actually have it. was most certainly a spell. Um, I'm afraid Captain Storm Surge would not be able to counter that one. That's fine. That's fine. I don't need four to win. Um. I'm just going to start to, like... Clap and I'll drop concentration on it. What was his first roll? Oh, we got 36 twice. 36, 36, 31. Yeah. And he got a bonus 15 on the forceful blow. Um, His average is 39.3. All right. <laughs> um, I, I, I turn to your orders to remind me never to get on the bad side of Captain Storm Surge. I think if I'm ever on his bad side, I'm, he's gonna throw me that far away. I don't, don't want to experience that. Crosses a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> he might, oh just, might just eat you. Uh, uh, he's presented with a, a small little medal. Um, As commensurate, the defending champion uh, holds on to his title for the next four years and is given a seat of honor at the feast this evening before the uh, display. Thank you so much to all of our competitors. You all did admirably well, uh, demonstrating your gall and strength to the people of this fine town. Um, Captain Sword of Surge comes by and uh, gives you all heartfelt congratulations. It was a wonderful competition. I, I love to see this. How did you all feel about it? Well, I think I have to train very hard the next four years to ever reach your capacities. That was just... We're always uh, taking more recruits if you're looking to... Some flight you're to fly. Looking for some training there, Master Firebeard. Always. I'm always looking for some training. Do you have an open spot? Oh, Blackburn always takes recruits and i know you've not done your years here if you wanted to own some property in town great opportunity I'm for not, you i'm not really fond of going through that whole, re, uh, whole recruitment ship i'll put um, you that's not that bad i'll put you underneath aeolus he'll be your commanding officer oh god no oh no <laughs> hell no i have this too much of a hassle already i can't deal with him to be he, my superior no 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 <laughs> Officer I've ever had. I don't know what you're I talking about. Had. I can't count how many times I saved this one's life, and he's gonna teach me stuff. No freaking way. Uh, Captain Storm Surge, would you care for a drink? I'm good at the moment, thank you. Uh, but I appreciate all right. it. You, you all enjoy the rest of the competition. I'll see you at the feast later, hopefully. Yes. Oh, uh, I'm gonna compete with you there. You open for us as another challenge? The feast, is not, the feast is not a competition. Good I'll food. make it one. I'm sure you'll have a, another way to present a challenge sooner or later. Sort of claps you on the back, Dunnan. Um, as you see, his muscles finally start to subside. I um, probably stumble forward a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yes. That. Ellie's wondering if uh, For, uh, if her amber braid girl actually saw her what she did, because she's pretty happy she came in second, and she kicked everybody's ass but Storm Surges. Uh, Time to congratulate Helly. Yeah, um, <laughs> at this time I would pour Dunnan and Helly a glass of wine, and, and ten too, and say, so, here, uh, reward for the competitors. I, people are raving about this wine, I wanted to try it out. Ooh. Ooh, wine. Ooh, we are wine. getting exclusive nice. here. So, yeah, uh, I'll pour I don't know. Aeolus, would you like a glass? Uh, to I'm the already. bloody mad dogs, of course. Aeolus, and I just give him one cup. <laughs> no excuses, Aeolus. It's fucking uh, wind shield me. Come on. Did Dunnan hear about the beer drinking contest? I don't think what? he's been told this. Yet. No, I no, think no. it was just that was when. Why yeah, are we even here? Went. Where is it? It's over there. Oh, didn't I didn't know. Not see that. Oh, give me that wine. And he chucks the wine and runs over to the beer drinking contest. 
Um, as Dunnan quaffs this, and then the rest of you enjoy this, there is this unfolding symphony upon your taste buds. It's this fusion of what you think are very velvety blackberries, a hint of cherry here and there, interwoven with undertones of oak and the smallest hint, hint of vanilla as it finishes in your mouth. The dance of these flavors is structured, still free, and there's this lingering nuance finish that leaves you feeling indelibly sophisticated. Um, uh, you all get all of you who quaff this gain inspiration. Very nice. Well, cool. right, so that is a luck point you can use to reroll any d20 until you complete a long rest. Awesome. Once you complete a long rest, it's gone. It is quite good. Done, and you rush over to uh, at the west side of Cathedral Square, and there's actually two different stalls that are doing some variety of drinking activity. Um, one of them is this contest, and a largely growing pot, a literal, like, cook pot, filled with silver at the moment, some copper pieces. Um, mm. The sign says, the Horn of Spirits. As you are there, well, one person sort of bows out, choking and sputtering for a moment. Oh, that's... I can't, I can't do it. Um, as the person takes the horn back from them uh, and sees you. Welcome, welcome. The challenge is a 50 silver buy-in. Not a one for the light of heart. If you can quaff the entire horn without stopping for air or <laughs> vomiting, you win the entire prize pot. Everything that everyone has offered up until that point during the day is yours. Mm, you think you're up to enough. the challenge? Can I get a feel? Is this even winnable? Can I get like an inside check? Make me an inside check. Or if it's just how works. Yeah. Looks, there's something to drink like down and we'll drink. Yeah, it looks like something you might be able to manage. Yeah. People in this town are probably weak livered. Um, yeah. The, the fact Nothing that the pot a, a, probably a has close handle. to 900 silver in it, if it's got five. I mean. Yeah, you got it. I mean. All right, go I'll ahead give him and the make 50. me. Yeah, Marco 50. Go ahead and make me a constitution saving throw with a plus 20 bonus. Jesus. 19. Yet, yeah, as you step behind the booth, the rule is simple. You must be drinking at all times. If you throw up, stop. Uh, or stop before the horn is dry, you lose. Alright. Simple enough. All right. uh, for 39 seconds, Dunnan, as you take this horn and quaff, it's not great ale. It's slightly warm. Um not quite cold it's okay it's the ale that you're happy to have six ales in um as you drink gulp after gulp after gulp this horn's just not emptying you last 39 seconds before you are bowed out how does dunnan get washed out of this competition do you sputter or do you throw up I think he sputters. He's not gonna throw up. He's not gonna waste the the, the ale. Sounds good. He's not gonna do that. No. The the sputter as it it's just filled you up so incredibly much. It's, you almost worry that it's about to start coming out of your mouth. You have to tilt your head forward um, as more ale just sort of sloshes down your front, pouring out of this one. As the uh, person running the game takes the one back, and a very very strong attempt, Master Dwarf. Unfortunately. The pot is not yours ah. today. I go again and I slam down another 50. I'm not <laughs> gonna get beaten Happy. by a horn. Go ahead. He hands it back to you. And make me another con save. Wait, I'm gonna mark off the 42. Ah, uh, the 50. Hmm. 
gonna use my inspiration. <laughs> Are you or go for it. <laughs> not yeah, gonna... go for it. That's it. 27. Last 47 seconds this time around. You add some good time. It's not enough. Jesus. Um, the what rest of this? you that are observing this can make an insight check. Or Arcana, if you are trained in Arcana. Can I cast Detect Magic? You can make a sleight of hand check to cast Detect Magic. I'm going to cast do a sleight of hand and, and cast Detect Magic. Um, before the 47 seconds are all out, I guess Stana is just gonna pass out the last five seconds, but <laughs> keeps on drinking while falling down. Eventually, the, the clattering of the horn to the ground and spilling of more ale out of the horn is sufficient to remove you from the competition. <laughs> all right, uh, just snoring on the ground happily. Uh, Sleight of hand is sufficient. You can cast Detect Magic. The horn is enchanted. Um, of Hellras, with an insight of 20, you gather that this is a uh, decanter of endless, slightly warm ale. There is no winning this competition. <laughs> <laughs> but you could pay 50 silver to have a very, very long drink. <laughs> you cast Dispel Magic on it? <laughs> you can attempt to do so. Uh, uh... Um, make me an arcana check. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> You're not sure if the spell magic works on magical items in the same way that it works on temporary spells, as the enchantments are bound into items in ways that make them non-temporary, but you can attempt to do so. Um, I am going to casually ask the guy who gets the pot of money if no one wins. The person running the competition, of course. He smiles at you. Or as you see, that he knows the game is rigged. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Who do I know who like approves people to set up the stands and play the games? Uh, you would suspect to be Blackburn or the Council of Elders. Okay. Uh, you're not familiar with town enough to know specifically who. You would imagine some degree of. Um, authority within Black uh, Elderthorn would be the people in charge. Okay. Ellie's gonna pull Ten aside and just whisper really carefully. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? This thing is rigged. I I can sense it. That's an enchanted. Uh, it's an endless decanter. It's gonna keep spilling yeah. as much fluid as possible. Bet your ass it is. Did we um, Blackburn. Yeah, let's just let, we'll just wander away, just real casually, and see what we can who we can talk to. I also want to tell Holly I want to be in the uh, I like um the insult competition. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> the individual, the person running the booth, sort of drags Dunn into the outside of the booth, and then leaves him on the ground. <laughs> I'm going to take a fight Blackburn. Uh, he starts calling out, Come, see if you can best this dwarf. He tried his best but could not do it. He contributed much to your pot of winnings, should you think that you can survive. I'll walk over to... to... Dunn and I'll... I will attempt to wake him up. Oh. <laughs> Um, I am going He's to cast a shocking asp. Sorry, Zakacha, this is an auto hit. Uh huh. Don't even take 15 points of damage damage as your. Um, as Aeolus defibrillates you back to consciousness. <laughs> what, what? What happened? Uh, you we lost. You lost twice. <laughs> No, this this can't. Be, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, no, you're uh, lying. Make, make I, I never me lose a drink. Make me host constitution save, Don. Oh no! <laughs> is it is Aeolus right in front of me? It is Aeolus <laughs> in front of you. Um. All right, I'm just pretending I'm starting to vomit at him. <laughs> so like holding my hand over my mouth and like like it got yeah. 
Daniel. Age head, I will also hold your mouth closed. <laughs> Dang, you are able to find a member of Blackburn, uh, one of the uh, recruits that's currently patrolling the edge of the square. Can I uh, get his attention and land in front of him? Oh, yes, miss. Um, what can I do for you? I think one of the game vendors is rigged to the competition. Uh, the, which one? The the beer drinking competition? Or ale drinking? The, the, guy, the, the mm -hmm. guy with the horn? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? But you <laughs> people out of their money. <laughs> That's the joke. Everyone, get, you get a good long drink for your, your silver, but nobody gets anything. It's to really so, knock people down. It's not in the spirit of the holiday. I mean, the mm. person that gets drunk off it would disagree. Not if they lost a hundred silver pieces. Yeah, no Who kidding. Who did it twice? <laughs> Who do you Best think? hundred silver pieces I ever... <laughs> no, no, no. Don't make me cast it again. <laughs> So oh, Hell God. is now get trying to think of a way we can just get back at the guy. Uh, now, if this is sanctioned, what can we do to mess around with him? Um Okay, we're we're walking away from the guardsman who clearly does not yeah, care. No. Um I am gonna suggest that I dispel the enchantment. <laughs> because I don't know if that'll work or not. Ellie will try it. Hilly will be your again. Dispel it for me, and I'll I'll take a, a stab at it. I've got some money. Okay. Okay. So you go back over where Dunnan is going in and out of consciousness, with all his fingers crackling with energy. <laughs> uh, I first am going to um. Oh, what is the? Is it aid or lesser restoration? Less restoration is poison condition. Great. Alcohol poisoning. I'm going to use lesser restoration to get the drunk to go away. Okay. Done in your He's head. He's not going to like that. Oh. Done in your head is clear. Oh. So you've just recovered from a nice long sleep. Sober oh, as that just. Oh, that just said it. We are dream. No, I no, no. Competition. I need 50 silver. Something like it can't be right. Do you have no, some no, 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 money? No, no, no. Yeah, what else? <laughs> I'm a little short. I'm completely broke. <sighs> what about you, uh, Siegfried? You have 50 silver to spare? All right, so, uh, Hellrest, you're entering. So you're, sla you're playing the 50 silver. Yes. Okay. Um, and then Tang, you're going to try to subtly dispel an enchantment on an item. Uh, and if I see that that is failing to resolve the issue, I'm going to cast as a backup, destroy water. So that for a moment, it'll be empty. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, as Hellerast starts to drink, go ahead and make me a sleight of hand check. As you cast a spell magic. Okay. As you start intoning the words for dispel magic, you feel a hand clap on your back um, from the sh uh, booth keeper. Hey, 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 there'll be none of that. Doing. Do I? see all this happening yeah you're you're there with dunnan your passive um terribly bad could Hello, based off my time save. based off my time in blackburn would i know that about this event the, something similar to this is present every time shield meet comes around okay you were a bit young just... last time um, you were still a, a, a fresh recruit at that time, so, um, you were on patrol at that point, 
So, but you're aware that there's usually these joke competitions that uh, go to contributing towards the city's coffers. Okay, um, I'll walk up over to to and and I'll hey, it happens every year. It's okay. So the context that Tang has been given is that the money goes to the guy who is standing there, not that the money goes to the city. Yeah, uh, uh, get a good 40 seconds in you. About halfway through that at this point. As, okay. Um, this small conversation of Tang and this individual mm-hmm. has happened as he interrupted her casting. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna protest that he's, uh, conning people. And if we don't do something done, we'll just keep competing until he's broke. Um, here, here, here. Let's, 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 let's let Hellerest have, have her long drink and I'll, I'll explain it to. Hellerest, do you throw up or do you sputter and stop? At 40 seconds. Uh, Heli, Heli notices that she just beat Dunnan and she just hands the horn back without buttering or throwing up. There you go. They reach the one so second longer than Dunnan and like, pass it back. Winks at the little guy and walks away. The guy looks at uh, Tang. It's the game, miss. Stop ruining the fun for everybody. All right, who thinks they're next? But can, who can best the lovely orcish woman? Can you get past 40 seconds? I don't know. Let's find out. As uh, uh, you, uh, another individual steps up and uh, contributes towards the pot. Tang is in a sour mood now. <laughs> um... Siegfried, uh, at one point, uh, uh, roll yep. me 10d100. Okay, I'm just going to do them one at a time. No, I j- just do it all at oh. once, because then it'll give me a total. Okay. So, uh, you put the 10 in front of the R? Uh, yes, slash, yes. Yeah, slash roll 10d100. 10d100. There you go. Um, So you bought seven entries for the property. There were 237 of the 1,000 entries available that went in. So uh, now roll a 1D237. uh, And it'll give you a random number. On a 1 through 7, you win the property. No. Um, Yeah. Uh... You can I use my inspiration on this or no? No. My inspiration is <laughs> on a D20 below. Well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the money was raised and uh, the somewhat rundown property has been auctioned off effectively um, through the raffle. Uh, there is a, another one happening later in the evening for a smaller property on the near the Tanner's district. Um, so it's a smellier section of town, but it is also available. Um, all of the money is going towards the Talfa anyway. Um, so if you choose to enter that one, you are more than welcome to. Um, or uh, purchase more tickets to be drawn for that one as well. Um, there's that, that. And that happens uh, later in the evening uh, during the feast, that drawing. The day passes by. Um, does anyone have anything that they would like to do, do additionally during the day? I don't want to insult someone. Certainly. <laughs> um, as, uh, after the beard competition concludes, and the winner with this m- fabulous mustache that's been beeswaxed up into uh, lovely curly cues, and the beard has been cut and shaped into that of a downward-facing dagger, wonderfully maintained, gives between the... Uh, mustache giving this beautiful effect of a cross guard um, to the knife-like beard 
who takes the competition. Um, uh, the rhyming and insulting competition sort of sparks back up. Um, do you jump in right away um, uh, against the first individual that steps up, or do you wait and listen to them for a little while, hoping to wait for someone to sort of run out of steam, but still squeak by a victory and then go up and challenge that individual? I'm going to wait, wait one round. One round. Okay, make me an insight check. Okay. Um, two individuals sort of go at it. A uh, human woman and uh, what looks to be a half-elven uh, boy, not more than 15, 16, who's washed out of the competition rather quickly. And then uh, this woman, anyone, anyone, and uh, you step up. Uh -huh. She offers for you to, to make the first move. Uh, what what race is this creature? Uh, it's a human woman. Uh, she looks to be late, uh, or early, early to mid thirties, maybe late twenties, a little bit rough. Okay. Um. Have you ever been mistaken for a kobold? I've never seen a human look so old. The crowd applauds. Uh, there's some cheers as she smiles. You're quite a little cute owl. Although I don't think that you are ready for this. You see, the goal of this whole competition is to really make the crowd howl. There's some more cheering back and forth. It's a smattering. It doesn't seem like it landed great for her. And it's your turn again. How many of these have you had to retell? I should just hit you with my silence spell. <laughs> uh, the crowd erupts in cheer for a little while uh, seems like you're winning them over slightly you see a look of consternation take over this woman's face I think you spend too much time in the wild sleeping in heather Are you sure you're that you're not a child with all of those ruffled feathers? Uh, some more smattering of applause. A couple boos echo through the crowd. I, I nod in acknowledgement and ruffle my feathers and then say, now, now hold on. You're not a complete moron. Underneath all that brawn, some parts are obviously long gone. Uh, there's some uh, wolf whistles that sort of take up in the crowd. Go ahead and make me a performance check for the cumulative of your three rhymes against her. Ooh, great roll. She sort of grits her teeth, and you see her lips are pursed. She looks out of the crowd, smiles, does a whole show of everything. There's a moonlit glade where feathers flutter. There's an owl and wise, no, just a mutter. Your feathers ruffled, your brain's a jumble. The wisdom, my friend, just seems to stumble. It's a... Seems like she might have won them back a little bit. There's some cheers, a, a boo here or there. Um, she's gonna roll her own check. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> nope, she does not succeed. Um, the crowd was more uh, uproarious for you, and uh, she notices her defeat and steps down from the stage. How long do you uh, choose to stay up here? Do you keep going until someone bests you? Uh, no. I, I, I got my uh, aggression out from the last encounter, so I'm feeling better. Uh, you make me, a, make me another performance check um, to 
graciously allow your rhymes to cede to your next opponent without losing face. Uh, I'm going to use my, I'm using my special on that. The, right, the inspiration? Lock. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd turns on you quickly after your next bout of rhymes. Uh, the goblin has come back and is looking to hold the crowd's attention for another uh, good while. And uh, you take your uh, bow from the stage and go back and rejoin your companions. And uh, we'll take our mid-session break here. How's that sound? We will. Right, uh, Sounds good. Six, seven All minutes, right. give or take. Forty-five. Yeah. Yep. Uh, sure.
drunken Dunnan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the drunkenness definitely helped I, with the acrobatics. I, 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 I will like, always question. <laughs> I like the if I had Cat and Dunnan as a couple levels of a drunken monk. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he does, yeah. particularly when drinking. That um, would be frightening multi-class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, getting back into it all. Uh, wonderful. Um, the caber toss taken care of. It's uh, mid-afternoon at this point. Um, before the feast begins, there is... Uh, the stage has been... The, the rhymers have been sort of shushed off of it um, for recognition of apprentices which is typ typical, happens every four years. Uh, different craftsmen come up and down um, and recognize the gift with the gifting of uh, official apprenticeships to people within the town. Um, it takes up a good degree of the time on stage. Um, uh, during this time, uh, another feat of feasting begins, and you can hear the, the barker from over there uh, calling out. Uh, you all uh, hear the cries for different types of food being sold. Um, how do the group of you choose to spend your afternoon? I know what Aeolus wishes to do. Aeolus make a group perception check for that. Yep, yep. Um, Siegfried would try to see if he can track down any of his family that may have come to town. Because it's not, it's uncommon that they usually come to town, but yep. they might come to town to shield me. Thing group perception check as well. Yeah. What's the um, status on the actual eating contest? So it'd be uh, the feat of feasting. Um, every time there's at least that is what we're waiting for. Okay. Oh, yeah. That that. Well, every um, ten. Every time there's at least ten signups, another competition begins. Um, and uh, I'm going to sign up for that. Really? And to help me track down my family, I'm going to use my wild companion ability to. Uh, I'll summon out a little hawk to help me get an aerial view of the place. Certainly. Um, go ahead and make another uh, perception check with advantage. For me. Yeah. Um, so uh, you spot um, your m uh, mother is currently um, talking with uh, some of the food vendors um, a few hundred feet away from you. Um, you don't spot anyone else at the moment. Uh, okay. But I'll just catch her I'll land my place. bird near my mother so she know she re probably recognizes it and then start heading that way. Uh, she's currently engaged in haggling over the price of spicy cabbage rolls. Um, she's trying to buy a bunch of them and asking for a discount. It is not being given to her. Um, I'll be like, come on, uh, help a brother out. Uh, Surely the the watch can get it. Uh, how get about, a, you? A how about you? How yeah. about you? You give it the discount of paying for some of them yourself. The three silver a piece. That's not expensive. All right, all right. I I I, I, I fork it over. <laughs> so so I'm buying much, ten right? of them. So thirty silver. If you'd like to pay for all of them and three to the woman, these it's fine. Yes, yes. I, I'll do that. Right, I got okay. this amount. <laughs> buy ten spicy cabbage. Well, she hands you yeah. it. Here you are. Oh. Good to see you. It is. I figured you, you, Dad, and Orla may have made made her way to town. She's around somewhere. Um, she's familiar with some of the other kids. She doesn't get to too much. Um, yeah, she'll be fine. Uh, I think he went to go participate in some eating competition. Oh, I gotta see that. She hands you one of the spicy cabbage rolls that she had purchased. Well, uh, we'll be around. We will. Uh... Me and my team are probably eating together at the banquet. If you guys should come sit with us, please do. That'd be great. All right, I'll I'll see you later. Uh, uh, she pops hello, Orla. I got a couple silver if you can track me down. If I see her again, I will. <laughs> I don't expect I'll see her until dinner. But I, I'm I'm running because I want to see my dad at the eating <laughs> competition. The uh, what are they? Uh, the spicy cabbage roll has like this zesty twist. There's a flavorful mixture of rice and spiced ground meat or vegetables, depending on the ones purchased, and it's enveloped in this uh, tender cabbage leaf that's sort of simmered and very lightly seared on one edge um, uh, to sort of hold it closed to a perfection. There's a smallest bit of a crunch from that sear. 
It's quite delicious. Um, uh, as you make your way over to the feet of feasting, uh, takes a moment. You do eventually spot your father, uh, who's currently face deep in some type of pie um, that has ch flaming chunks that have sort of been spilled onto the table by the different competitors as this pie has been placed in front of them. Um, I, I'll uh, start cheering for him. I'll just. <laughs> I'll be like, Bronze River, Bronze River, <laughs> just yelling it out from the crowd. Uh, roll me a d20. Uh, he lasts in the competition reasonably long. Uh, through the pie stage and eventually a pot plate of dumplings is placed in front of him, he's not able to get through them, unfortunately. Is uh, this something I can use my inspiration on? No, that was just rolling oh, to see okay. what place he takes. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Uh, ten or higher, he was going to win. Because um, he would have been the tenth person out at that point. That makes sense. Um, but he is uh, he's fourth place uh, in this competition. Uh, as he is unable to finish these dumplings. Um, greets you and... It's good to see you. Uh, you haven't been back in town for a while. No, uh, we... Uh... It's an interesting story. I, I, I can't tell it to you here, but it was interesting. Uh, here, here's some. I, I pour him a gla one of the, the last. Uh, I have two glasses left of my bottle because I don't think Aeolus had one, so I, I'll pour him one. Here, have, have a seat. Uh, wash down those dumplings. That'll be great. Thank you. As uh, Yuri uh, enjoys the wine you provided for him, you catch up and tell us you what's been going on back on the homestead and you fill them in on your adventures for a time yep airless uh it takes you a little while uh, eventually you do uh find captain storm search uh talking with cedar uh who's who's running the lotto uh for the day um and they're engaged in some conversation that comes to an abrupt halt as you uh come up yes what is it i wanted to have a conversation with you and the other lieutenants after the feast. Concerning? This is a day I for revelry, like... not business. Well then, I put in, and could I put in a request for tomorrow? Certainly. Uh, what topic is this concerning you, Ellis? I would like to offer a new position, if if acceptable, in Blackburn for myself. Such as? I would like to become Elder Thorn and Blackburn's creature specialist. That shoes on his lip for a moment. And I can also offer the Library of the Iron Hang as well, for my experience. Miss Cedar, so I mean, ah, so you are affiliated with them in some degree? I'm a member. Captain, this is not a small offer. We should entertain it. Very well. Unless you're not as well versed on the intricacies of how Blackburn and the Council interact. Um, I have not the authority to create something, but with our well, mine and uh, Nath's now, now Nath's blessing, we can present the proposition to the Council of Elders, upon which Cedar sits. If we are to open a specialist position within Blackburn, they would have the final say on the authority. It's a check against the Watch's power. I have no issues with it. I'll present it to Nath, and we'll talk tomorrow. 
Yes, sir. Thank you for the both of you. Now go enjoy some green, uh, steamed green spears. I hear they are delectable this year. Nice and young, fresh. I plan on it. They go back to their con their hush hu hushed conversation. Uh, make me a perception check as you did depart. You catch the first few words as you are making your exit, um, but you recognize that lingering would sort of give away that you heard anything. Um, but Cedar saying, oh, on the last full moon, there was at the least seven hooded figures wandering that way, all cloaked up into the woods. What do you, and that's the last part that you can hear. Okay. The day continues. Um, for what are the group of you looking out for? Purchasing more food of various delights. If you do yeah, find I'm... the steamed green spears, it's a delicate bunch of young asparagus, steamed to perfection, drizzled with zesty, herb-infused dressing. It's a vibrant, refreshing dish uh, for your palate to yours. Go ahead, Siegfried. Oh, if Dunnan's around, I'd probably invite him over uh, to hang out with our dad and just be eating and drinking a ton of food. Oh, Hel Helly, too. Uh, uh, and ten, uh, ten I lost track of when she went to the, the insult place. Uh, your father purchases for uh, Yuri, uh, purchases for those of you who are joining him, um, one of the pies that they were eating previously in the competition, a devil dragon egg pie. It's this delightly, delightfully flaky pastry encasing a rich filling of spiced and fluffed deviled eggs that is seasoned and baked to a golden brown finish. This custardy felt like filling uh, it has a interesting combination of flavors and it is served on fire let's <laughs> see if we'll go go for it it somehow marries hearty savory and sweet in a strange combination there's a little bit of spice on the finish uh and it's just not unpleasant a little bit Probably not the best for summer heat, but it is very good. At this point, uh, Siegfried would break out the last bottle of elderflower liquor, liquor and start passing around. Uh, he's getting real drunk now. Probably started to drink like dwarven drinking songs, uh, trying to get other dwarves into it. Certainly. Um, the day passes by in joyful reverie. Um, does anyone wish to come? participate in any other competitions or any of the ones that I've mentioned thus far that are still running. Dan would like to try this um, back throwing thing. Certainly. Where I had step away. Yeah. Your head finally right. clear from the liquor. You make your way around towards the entrance uh, toward near the faded gate um, and set up at the bag toss bounty. Um, for two silver, you are given a bag get one bag for right. entry um and you have to throw it in the jars go ahead and make me a dexterity check um uh no proficiency and an athletics check with your proficiency if you have it your first throw goes wide um, but there's a good solid hit on the post that's holding up the back edge of this thing. Oh, that would have definitely broken something if you had hit it. Gotta aim a little bit better, Master Dwarf. Another two silver. You can participate in this as long as you so choose. I try again. Certainly. Dex and athletics. Uh, once there. again, um, your aim goes high this time. There's this billowing effect as you hit the back curtain of the booth um, and the bag sort of rolls down into the collection area. You got Third some strength in that bottom. arm, but it's a big clay pot. How do you miss it? Uh, mm. No luck for me today. It's two silver per throw. Um, <laughs> there, there's this 
creaking of wood as you hit the the back curtain again and the whole cart the whole um booth sort of shudders for a moment with the impact of the throw my gosh you got some power there i hope you won the caper toss oh uh, that's that place belongs to storm Surge. that man is half giant i have to say that was some crazy damn amount of strength that man has yeah another bag on the house go for it i appreciate it go ahead dex <laughs> oh no <laughs> But luck is not with me today. No. You are. Running. You should get pegging, your head out of your ass. You're pegging the areas all around. At one point, you swear you graze one of the pots and it just sort of rotated slightly, but it wasn't enough to uh, actually get a good solid hit on it. Maybe, next time, maybe next time, take your helmet off, Dunnan. <laughs> I should get you back to drinking and eating. Festival. You're in regular street clothes at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back and enjoy the drinking and eating. I think that's uh, that's enough so games for today. Roll me a d6 button. Uh, after you finish, uh, a young boy, about 10 years old, comes up, uh, pays his two silver, and as you walk away, you hear the cracking of a pot. And uh, the kid exclaiming, exclaiming jubilantly, winning the competition. Oh, oh, he needs it more than me. The hours pass. Um, I'd like everyone to roll me just a general charisma check to represent any, any of the gossip and conversations that you overhear during your time at the festivities. <clears throat> Siegfried and Dunnan. Uh, both of you can roll me a d100. Six and seventy-two. Seventy-two. All right. Um, Siegfried. One of the conversations that you just overhear snippets of here and there before they depart. Uh, I swear, I heard stuff coming from the basement. I don't know what it was. I go down there. There's no rats. There's nothing. I think, I think there's tunnels underneath, and there's stuff living in them. Like monsters and creatures eating up everything that goes down there. I've never seen them, but I know they're there. You get the uh, sort of the, the alligator in the sewers of New York type of uh, joke, um, <laughs> gossip. Uh, uh, probably from someone remarkably well sloshed at this point. Maybe he competed in the same thing Dunnan did and did equally terribly. Um, 36, Dunnan. Uh, you hear a an old crone that's sort of just uh, talking with, you, pr you presume, one of her friends. Um, so, no, ever since, uh, ever since he passed away, uh, we've been finding little twig men. Mm, dolls made out of sticks and bundles and leaves uh, on our doorstep every morning. Uh, and uh, some of the neighbors, too have been finding them. It, it's quite cute. Um, I like to think is he's still with us somehow. Uh, and as they proceed onwards, continuing this conversation of presumably oh some lost individual. That's some Blair Witch shit right there. A little creepy. Presently, the sun finally starts to go down. Um, and you all find seats at the feast. Um, Orla is in some degree of a sugar coma um, as she is sitting there, face planted on the table. Um, she seems to have found some degree of uh, candied sugar at some point um, and had far too much of it. 
Um, every now and then that. she sort of rolls her head to the side, takes a bite of what looks to be a piece of venison that's been placed in front of her by Rorlai, by, um, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Lorelei, and then rolls her head back face down and goes back to her little nap. Um, Yuri and Lorelai do sit with the group of you. I, um, I go and um, rub her back and uh, I cast uh, lesser, lesser Restoration on her. Uh, that's not solve the problem, but it helps. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Gobron does not sit with you. Um, as a member of the Council of Elders, he sits at the high table. Um, along with Sidar, um, what other individuals amongst the council do you recognize? Uh, Sidar Gogran Kelpip, a dragonborn woman who some of you have met once. Uh, you know that her name is Ikthik, and uh, Trum Hallam, uh, the butcher, uh, uh, sit there along with Captain Storm Surge, who has been. Uh, has been wearing his little medal from the caber toss. Um, he's sitting in the place of honor as uh, the winner of the competition. Um, uh, off to a table on uh, near-ish to the front, but off to the side, uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you spot Matron Toadtooth has joined the competition, the uh, festivities for the evening. Um, and uh, you don't have too many people uh, nearby. You're not squeezed in shoulder to shoulder as the group of you are enjoying your meal. Is Matron Toad Tooth sitting at a table with others? Uh, she is. She's currently engaged in conversation with uh, what appears to be two elven men and a uh, gnomish uh, woman. Alright. Um, Aeolus is a linger on them and then he's slowly gonna look over at the high table and using observant he wants to try to spot if there's anything else they're talking about regarding to the earlier toe tooth or the or storm the, surge the storm surge okay um make me a perception check it's less about reading lips but about Making sure that you're looking when they're not obfuscated by something. Ooh, 21. Um, you get most of the conversation at this point seems to be involved in uh, discussing the feast that has been placed upon all of these tables. Some of these tables are dozens of feet long. There are hundreds of people seated in the square for these these uh, festivities. Um, and the feast itself. Uh, and... The conversation that you pick up most from Storm Surge is he's conversing with uh, uh, Ichthik about uh, the fact that no one has uh, deigned to uh, take up the mantle of uh, in the mayoral role as of yet, and that they'll need someone to do so uh, for the armistice meeting in Armskirk in, a month, in three ten days' time, but. Uh, barring that, uh, he thinks that she should be the one to attend in in the mayoral stead. Um, and she's sort of waving it off, saying, oh, I'm sure we'll have someone. Then their conversation turns to discussing uh, the Thane wing dish that uh, has been placed at the high table for them, which is a sp uh, spiced and diced grouse, partridge, quail, and wood goof. Um, uh, it is... Apparently very well made. Um, it's this sort of jambalaya of different meats. Um, and they are all enjoying it to a large extent. Okie doke. Or the group of you do while you're eating. Uh, Dallin's looking at Storm Search and how much he's eating and is trying to compete with Storm Search. <laughs> are there any performers uh there is a very soft uh minstrel playing at the moment just a solitary one it sounds like a more of a stringed instrument cello or a violin of some sort um but it is just background at the moment um you're not 
the stage is on a different section of the cathedral square. So no one's on the stage. It just seems to be filling the space as ambiance. Hmm. This torch is lit all, all throughout uh, the feasting area as the sun has well and truly gone behind the clouds by mountains at this point. No, I, I would just hang out with my family and eat and just ask Lo Orla Or Or what she's been up to. Um, there was this jelly based in minty. It was so good. Ugh. I can't eat that bite. And she stuffs a wedge of potato in her mouth and chews lazily <laughs> her face on the table. Mom, you need to get a jelly recipe. I want more of it. Rolls her face back down. Um, jelly does sound pretty good. Prior to dessert, uh, Yuri and Lorelei uh, do excuse themselves. They need to get Orla back home. Um, and uh, they depart. They make their... Well, back to bed. Uh, they're staying at the Faded Gate for the evening and they're traveling back home in the morning. Uh, but I'll walk you. It's fine. You spend some time with your friends. As uh, Yuri picks up Orla, just throws her, her over his shoulder. If you throw up, deal me. Beforehand. I'm not gonna tell you, Dad. Eh. Sort of rolls her a little bit so that way her, her head is sticking a little bit off to the side. There you go. She'll be asleep in like 10 steps anyway. Good night. Um, maybe we'll see each other before we leave. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, there might be business. I can't tell. Uh, you oh. know how it is. Enjoy. Enjoy. It's been good to see you. Uh, Lorelai gives you a big hug and a kiss, and she goes around and bids farewell to the rest of you, and it's so nice to meet you um, again. Uh, it was so brief last time, but good to spend some time with you. Uh, she bids farewell to you, Tang. Um, now stay safe. Uh, and they depart. Hey, Hagfried. Yeah? Can you keep your eyes out? Um, I'm gonna head out early. I don't really feel well. Oh, um... Anything I can do? Or... No, I just... I think I ate too much. Uh, I'll... I'll see everyone in the morning. Alright, um... Well, it was... It was nice getting to relax with you for a little bit for once. Oh, yeah. It it was fun. And I'll quickly exit. Aeolus is having flashbacks to his house. Um, Sigrid, you did not win the second and final lotto, by the way. Uh, no. Okay. So you depart, Aeolus, um, crossing the uh, market Pardon me, the Cathedral Square. Um, you see uh, Captain Storm Surge sort of nod and give you sort of just an acknowledgement that he's uh, like as a farewell, not getting up and going through the whole motion, but just sort of recognizing you crossing. Um, uh, so none of you are wearing armor at the moment. Ailis, as you're crossing the square, these thoughts ruminating in your head. There is a cacophonous sound that rips through the square out of nowhere. The light of the torches pales in comparison to the massive explosion that rips through above Blackburn Keep. It's the fireworks display. The fireworks display has begun. Um... Uh, there's a moment of fear, and then people start cheering as these explosions of light and color start filling the air. In that moment, Aeolus would immediately turn around and just cast false life on himself and just looks skittish. There's a moment for your adrenaline to rush through your body. Um, you think you're in danger for a good long minute or so. 
until you realize that no, this is just part of the celebration. You starting to go home? Yes. Okay. Eventually your nerves are a little bit more calmed down. The fireworks display does not last long. Only a, a three minutes. Um, uh, eventually you find a uneasy sleep. The partying goes late into the night. Lots of dancing and singing as the feast concludes. Um, and the tables are moved out of the way for participants to take up the dance floor, so to speak. Um, yeah, of course, Siegfried, go ahead. Siegfried would, uh, go up to Ten and be like, uh, Ten, uh, I have a welcome to Elderthorn present for you. And Hi. it's a long stick <laughs> wrapped in <laughs> haphazardly in, in, like, canvas cloth, and I hand it over to you. I uh, look at it quizzically. And uh, I have given Ten the Staff of Thunder and Lightning. Like um, let me grab it. It's in, yeah. It's like, uh, I'm, I have too many magic items on me, and I figured this might be useful for you. You being the flying person at all. Uh, let me make sure this shares that to everyone. Should everyone. There we go. And yeah, uh, do you think you could use it? Um, I'm reading it. Give me a sec. <laughs> There's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Siegfried, um, what is your passive perception? It is an 18, I believe. Okay. Uh, Tang, do you have a higher passive perception than Siegfried? Uh, my passive perception is 23. 23, okay. Does anyone have higher than 23? I don't think so. Uh, maybe Aeolus. No, Aeolus is, is at 21. Okay. So Tang, you are the only person, you're the only individual that notices this. As Siegfried sort of gifts this to you, um, and sort of looks at you squarely in the face for a moment. Uh, takes you a moment to sort of search your memory and reconnect everything. Um, uh, there is a glorious black mustache no, 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 I... that has been placed upon Siegfried's face. Um, and as you're thinking back, the only person who could have placed that there was Orla. Uh, as he sort of turns, you recognize it as an illusory mustache, but you get, you get a little bit of a chuckle to yourself. He's played a practical joke on her uh, stepbrother. <laughs> I do not mention the mustache, but instead uh, thank him for the generous gift. You kept us alive in that weird-ass temple, and I'd always be grateful for that. Will you stop trying to die, then? Probably not. Uh, anyways, uh, it looks like the performers are starting off. I'm gonna go join in. And then he, he takes a swig of the, the elderflower liquor and just hands the what's left over to Ten, and then he runs off to the performers. Ten sighs, and starts drinking more alcohol <laughs> yeah My... uh, i am going to unattune from the staff and slip on the ring of winter no you can change that over your long rest yep yes Tom. uh i just want to say if nobody objects then i will take the ring of reaction i, I don't object oh, and uh yeah if there's any people setting up for the performers and the dance Siegfried would 
join in with the and just play whatever they're playing like just okay. help them help, just um, join in the the the, the fray okay. uh you don't need to make me a performance check it's yeah. easy enough for you at this point with your bonuses to sort of pick up and carry the tune recognize um the key in which they're playing and make adjustments and follow the pattern seems like a lot of them are enjoying themselves even though they are putting on performance for the festivities this is also a piece of enjoyment to them as it is to you and yeah. this is how they choose to enjoy their time even though it is sort of like working um they are performance at heart and they uh one tune sort of blends into the next um a upbeat and uh, joyous sort of bounce changes into a slow and steady uh, waltz and transitions into a sort of medium pace carrying tune for younger individuals who wish to move around a little bit more and there's a variety as the evening progresses is there a dance floor or yeah so all of the feasting dance. tables have been moved to the side um, okay so dan would probably i don't know take some <coughs> random woman just ask may i and i'm gonna show you the hidden talents of a dwarves and ask for a hand to dance make a persuasion check Twenty-five. great roll um when it counts yeah definitely not during uh now I'm gonna fall flat on my nose. <laughs> uh, here we are. Uh, there is a uh, kindly faced uh, human woman uh, in a blue shawl, which is uncharacteristically trimmed with um, what looks to be some type of animal fur along the collar it's just dressed so nicely um more than you would expect a, a farmer or farm hand to dress uh for this type of uh festival uh you're not familiar with her as uh she takes it thank you i would be pleased to enjoy a dance at you um go ahead and make me a performance check then Okay, eighteen, pretty good. As the dance progresses, she engages you in polite conversation. And how did you learn to dance so kindly, Master Dwarf? I didn't catch your name, either. Uh, oh, you haven't heard of me? Uh, my name is Dan and Firebird. You've probably heard of the mercenary group, the Bloody Mad Dogs. I believe I've heard the name in passing. Hmm. Couldn't say if it was good or bad. Uh, my name is Malni Sean. I'll give you that in. And Next. to your other question, Eileen in very close to your to her ear and just whisper you know it's just a hidden passion of mine but don't tell my companions not a word i promise uh message that mr dunnan if i might be so uh, forward just call me dunnan very well dunnan um well, it is a delight to have someone as sophisticated as able to keep up with me in this town. Mom's Don and Chuck said a little bit, uh, little bit at, at the word sophisticated. <laughs> I'm an arms oh. originally. Uh, Adam's Kirk. Yes, I'm um, far away. Not terribly. Been there. Um, we, I was helping lead one of the trading ships that brought some of your goods for the day. Um, figured I'd mm. stay in town for the festivities rather than spend it at sea. Well, I'm glad you did. And then, like, give her a, a twirl a little bit. 
you're heading back to Anopskirk because we might be on the route there if you need some I know, protection for the road. I appreciate the offer. I, I will be traveling with ample protection through the ODMC tank, though. Ah, uh, all right. Then you're in good hands. The offer is not unwelcome. I do appreciate it. Um, have you heard tell? As she sort of gives you a little bit of a twirl. Um, uh, sp we spotted it on our way in. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, the, the ship with crimson sails. Magnificent. Off to the south. Just barely. Crimson sails? Yes, it was mm. magnificent. Um, seemed to be sailing hmm, southerly. Uh, but I understand those waters are treacherous, are they not? Yeah, well, from what I heard, yes, they're pretty treacherous. Ambitious um, individuals, then. I tend to stay away from the sea. I'd rather be on solid ground or underground. The water is just treacherous, you know? I can understand your sentiment. I find it exhilarating, the smell of the salt air and spray upon my face. But to each their own. I, it too has... It is very tempting because it gives you the impression of freedom. The wind, the sea breeze, the seagulls. But it also can turn around very quickly. If the weather, the, the wind turns, you might find yourself in a sea storm. Or worse, uh, in the clutches of pirates. Worse. Well, or that, yes. As the song comes to a conclusion, she, or the second song, pardon me, comes to a conclusion. Thank you very much, Donan. I enjoyed our dance. Uh, if you I give, are, uh, Patrick, please feel free to look me up. I will we'll do. I give a haphazard bow and excuse myself. Or anyone else have anything that they would like to accomplish during this evening? Um, I want to ask Kelly uh, if this dancing is a special type of like mating ritual or what what people are doing. They're just enjoying themselves. I mean, mating could possibly happen if you really like your partner, but it's not really... Uh, it's not the season for that. No. Well, these people don't have a season. We... we around here, babies happen... All throughout the year. Ken looks very confused and bewildered. They, uh, they will meet when they feel like it. When the mood is right. It's so strange. Yeah, well. Speaking of mates, uh, how old is Aeolus's child? Aeolus is who? Doesn't Aeolus have a child? He mentioned we could stay at his home, so... No, that's just a bachelor pad. A what? He lives there by himself. Why does he need a home if he's by himself? You know... You might want to ask him that. I've never really been too sure. I'm just grateful to pass out on the floor. Okay. Then we'll save the rest of uh, her questions for Aeolus. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> the evening eventually concludes. You all find your way back to your places where you are resting. Pay the gate, it was to his home, 
that is childless, apparently. Um, <laughs> sick read, sleeping in the barracks, certainly. You all complete a long rest as we move to the day beyond Shield Meet. Uh, the morning breaks. And let me adjust my calendar. You're in the first day of Elias. Uh, the month of high sun. As the day begins and you all awake, what would you like to do for the day? Siegfried is probably get ready to go. Siegfried is very hungover, so he's gonna get some coffee and then go over to Aeolus's house. Uh and offers to cure the hangover. <laughs> oh yeah, I can I can do it myself. Do it. Dun and Dun and get help. It's all right. He sometimes Dun and just touches me, and the hangover goes away. Okay. It sounds so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just We're I'm just sure. baffled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just like holds my head, and then suddenly hangover's gone. <laughs> oh, I mean that that touch and he just wiggles with his eyes. <laughs> so yeah, and we are, we are anybody trying... heard something interesting? Huh? I just played music and drank. Mm. I apparently met a woman from Amskrank. Melni Sean, you heard of her? Danced a little bit. She told me something about the ship in the harbor uh, with crimson sails. She saw it when they oh, were in the harbor. Ah, uh, she saw it, okay. She saw it on the southern horizon. Southern horizon. Aren't we supposed to go to the Witchlight Marshlands? Wasn't there something? Yeah, we need to get some horses if we can. Alright. At this point in the, con in the conversation, the group of you have reached Aeolus' abode. I, I knock on the door. Aeolus! We're all here! It all swings right. open. Time for fun is all. It's, it's gone. Back to work. Aeolus just blinks as he's on the floor with just parchments surrounding him. Yeah, I I hand him a, a little handkerchief here, I got some drool, and then I hand him some coffee afterwards. Everything <laughs> okay? Yes, uh, apparently we have to head to this witch light place. We need to get some horses. <clears throat> I want to stop by by Blackburn before we head out. And Aeolus, seeing everyone, is going to quickly scoop up the all the parchment and start to stuff it into his bag. What, what were you doing here? Just... Relaxing. It's a strange way to relax. Are there some nudes? Drawings on the parchments? I mean, you could try to grab one out of Aeolus's head. <laughs> I'll reach for one. Make, me, me, make me opposed acrobatics checks. Did I, did I notice anything before Aeolus scooped him up? Perception decision. Oh, shit. <laughs> Meets it, beats it. Uh, Dunn and you grab one. I take a look. What does he see? Aeolus? You see a roughly drawn head that looks like Hellerast's with the eye focused and scribbled writings of how to fix it ideas. <laughs> uh, and then Probably. at the bottom, you see. 
you see other scribblings of of other crudely drawn objects. Art's not particularly a Hulsa's thing. <laughs> You're a really strange one. Oh, man. Well, here, keep your drawings. Ellie sees oh. it and she's just like, Aw, thanks. <laughs> I don't know, I, I take up a little space in your head, Aeolus. Thank you. All of you do. It's <laughs> not pleasant. I was thinking of working my way to a spell like that, but your way seems quicker. Oh, it's... I haven't made any headway. Um, while the group of us are here, I overheard something. Storm Surge and Cedar were talking about cloaked individuals heading into the woods. You think they mean the pinwood? I think so. And if that means that our lovely brother and sister are possibly back. Oh, well, shit. Then you have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> you mean Alan? That I guy do. again? Oh, not the third sort of time. Well, at the very least, Storm Surge seems to be on alert. He wasn't last time. This is true. I'm just... I'm just on good? edge. No, no, you have good reason. I mean, I, when I heard the fireworks go off yesterday, I thought it might have been your house for a second. Oh, don't believe me. There was a full panic attack in the middle of the street. <laughs> I, uh, I, I found a new spell that I was able to do. And it, it exhausted me. So, well, um, all we can do is be on as alert, alert as we can, but we still got a job to do. And you said you need to go towards the keep. And you were saying yeah. something. Can someone tell Cam? Uh, maybe not here. When we need to speak more privately, when we get to the keep, we can let you know. Hmm. It's it's not not about you. It's just. Who might be listening? You look around uh, the one room small abode that Aeolus has. Why, why I mean, would listening here? What's more yeah, private than Aeolus's home? You're true, you're right, you're right. I, for a second, I thought we were at Bukas. Sorry, I'm so I'm <laughs> real hungover. Are you sure you're well, yeah, yeah, the uh, All right, all right. And then Siegfried goes and explains the incident with Mayor Tidel, um, what happened with their daughter and son in law. Um, how she basically, like, tortured her daughter, caused the death of her son-in-law for this, like, weird evil ritual. And, um, we ran into these two elves. I think one was, like, a... One was, like, Aeolus, was, like, a blood hunter. And the other one was, like, a ranged fighter who could use magic. Um, but we, we killed them once, and then we faced them again. And then we killed them a second time. Um, the second time we faced them was when we... We saw a giant crab monster uh, in the heart of a mount mountain, and they were infecting the water that was turning people to stone, basically. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much that made sense, but Think Reed will catch, try and catch 10 up as much as he can. That sounds so insane. Yeah. Yeah. She's starting to think, do I really need to be with these people? <laughs> I had thought in the back of my head. And, uh, yeah, and everything, all this stuff somehow has to deal with the pinwood, which you have never seen, um, uh, which you will probably see soon and get an idea of it for yourself. It's something um, Elder Thorn deals with every day, so uh -huh. if you can help with it, we'd appreciate it. Oh, okay. Anything else before you head to Blackburn Keep? No. A group of you make your way uh, to the common hall of Blackburn Watch. Uh, a number of recruits are currently there enjoying 
a bit of a late morning meal. Uh, oranges and oats and various uh, fibrous cereals. <laughs> As you uh, trot in, uh, you don't see any of the lieutenants or storm surge at the moment. But after about ten minutes of asking around, um, you are directed to uh, Arvier's chambers. Um, uh, as he's the one currently on watch for the morning. Uh, what I do with you? Welcome. You enjoy yep. activities. I see you lose to sur Storm Search. I can't remember that. Is, there is no way that anybody wins against that brute. But I don't compete. He's strong. Good on our Strong is an underestimate. Under a statement. I would really like to know what he has a a tense Blackburn key. Because he threw he threw that right into the wall. Make a deception check. <laughs> right. Wait, 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 wait. I wanna wheel I wanna wheel ALS. It doesn't right. work out. <laughs> sure. What I do you for? I'm actually looking for Captain Storm Search. This thing he mentioned? Uh, yes. About the buggers? Track buggers? Yes. Okay. Don't know where he is. Hmm. Okay. Um, if you see him, just tell him we're gonna... We'll be here for the next few hours as we prepare. If decision made, you have Nath send you his uh, word? I believe so. Nath send you word. Okay. Thank you, Arvia. You good. It was good to see you, Arvier. Take care of yourself. Why you have mustache? Oh. Uh, probably my sister. Um, oh my god, you grew it overnight! Pen starts giggling. <laughs> well, uh, I'll just leave it on for now. Seems like there's some dwarf in you after all. It's go, and then it come back, and then it's go, and then it's come back. This look you trying out? Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Shit. Eh. Doesn't match. Wrong color. <laughs> Change color. Aeolus is is gonna cast Mage Hand and have the Mage Hand like like twirl the end of the imaginary mustache. It passes through the illusion. <laughs> it can't twirl. <laughs> it's just this wide, bristly, like uh Police sergeant style mustache. <laughs> hey, Freda, right, Arva. We had our fun yesterday. Let's get back to work. We need some horses. You, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> well, I spent a lot of money yesterday, so I hope we could afford a horse or horses. True. Well, if not, I think we need the exercise. It is a lampshade. That is the thing that is currently on Siegfried's face, and it is quite wide. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yep. Ooh, I want the move on you. <laughs> um, well, what will your day consist of? You are able to acquire horses during uh, your runabouts. Um, you're trying to purchase or um, trying to rent? I don't know. I think we are too broke for purchase. Blackbird doesn't have horses for you. They'd have no need for horses. Yeah. Um, so you are, you are asking a you know, farmer. I don't need a horse. For um, beasts of burden. Um, make me of two of you. Any two of you can make me a general charisma check. 
Whoever you want. My charisma is 16. I think Dunn <laughs> Dunn's making the other one. Go ahead, yeah. Sigrid. I screwed it up. Oh, no, mm. I really got that one. Um, you find I love one, it. You find one farmer willing to lend you one of their draft horses um, and a cart um, as opposed to individual horses um, for the price of 400 silver and the return of the horse um, before the uh, season is up because they need them um, when it comes time for harvest. Hell, I can put me on some of that. Aeolus is going to pull Siegfried aside. Mm. I would feel terrible taking their horse, because I know it's not going to return. That's that's what I'm feeling, too. I, I think... Yeah. Thank you for the offer, <laughs> but we... We cannot safely guarantee your your horse's return. Um, make me a persuasion check, Alice. You're oh, being boy. forthright with them about that. Pretty good. Um, I'm gonna wheel him. I'm gonna wheel him. Certainly. Nineteen. Okay. Um. They do offer you um, to be equitable um, the purchase outright of the cart for half the price. If you are able to find another beast of burden, but they are willing to do that exchange with you because you were sort of kind about They don't need the cart. They need the draft horse back. Um, but they will sell you the cart if you have another beast of burden. The pup be able to? Pup is cart? large. Yeah, the pup could draw 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 the cart. Well, the pup could take the job of uh, drawing the cart. Yeah, if you say so. Uh, how much for the the cart? Two hundred. Kelly will pay that. Okay, mark it off, and the group of you have a small cart. We also have a small four in... cart. It is still large, a, a large object. Um. And we also have that in the in the party funds if Hellarest doesn't want to eat all that cost. Kelly's fine. Yeah. Um just as Save a point the party of, loot for later. As a point of reference as well, this cart is a typical cart. It is not made for henge travel, as you've seen some of them go. It is too wide to pass through any of the henges. So if you go to Matron Toadus, for example, you would have to leave the cart at um outside of the henge it's too wide to pass no through. worries and it is a standard cart um all right cart acquired anything else in town and if not where are you going this this cart doesn't have a, a cover on it does it it does not so I, I think we should at least take some time to get like a canvas cover fitted on it I think it would be helpful. That'd be Gogrin, right? Uh, Gogrin would have the supplies. It's not the craftsman. Right. So maybe Gogrin's then the Amber Braids? <laughs> uh, Amber Braids are smithies, not oh, okay. wood woodcarvers. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess then Gogrin's and the woodcarvers. Uh, the woodcarver is a gnome by the name of Neskas Nakentaid. I think I pronounced that correctly. Or how I wrote it. Um, Nes Neskas Nak Nakonitid? I don't know. Tinned. Pardon me. Um, Nes oh, it goes by Neskas. Uh, he's able to put a sort of like a covered wagon Oregon Trail style on with about a day's work. And 70 silver. Aeolus is going to die of... Yes, and Terry. We knew do that. You think that. Do you think it's worth it, Aeolus? <laughs> I mean, for the comfort of everyone as we travel. Yeah. Trust me, you do not want to see me wet. That that is true. I, I 
All right. Um, I'm going to take the 70 silver out of the party loot. Okay. Noted. Um, go ahead and mark that off then. Uh, see if yeah. You... Yep. Um, and, um, and then I'll also mention to... Um, to I'll take uh, the remainder Donut. of the day um, to do yeah, that, that. And you will be able to set out for the cart tomorrow. Yeah, that, I, yeah that's fine. Um, I think that's all right with our the job death on it. Right, Heli? For the witch light. What was that? How, how much time do we have to go to the witch light swamp? I thought it was four weeks to walk. Okay. To, so, to get there? No. Um, no? I'm going to pull up the map. And uh, Siegfried also mentioned, hey, Dunnan, didn't you want to show the Amber Raids your new hammer? Uh, sure. So, if you are I going was... to Armskirk and then making your way to the Witchlight uh, Marshlands from there, it is uh, 24 hexes if you go as the crow flies to Armskirk. If you're moving around the Pinwood, um, you add two hexes, which is a day's travel. Um, an extra day's travel through the Drukon Expanse. If you go more through the Expanse of Null Territory, in that case. Um, uh, and it is 26 hexes to the edge of the Witchlight Marshlands. Um, each hex is three mile, uh, th pardon, three leagues, and each league is three miles. So each hex is nine miles. Which you can cover two of them with a cart during that that time. I believe I can move you to this map now. Um, don't move the token. Uh, zoom out, and then you should be able to see the um, view viewable space. Correct? No. Mm. Yep. So, That's yep. all. Uh, around the cool. Pinwood, through the Drukon Expanse, to the northern edge of Armskirk, and then to the Witchlight Marshlands. Um, the last leg, yep. if you choose to leave the cart at Armskirk, where it might be preserved for your return, you would need to do the last five hexes on foot, which would take you five days, as opposed to two to three. So, leaving tomorrow morning isn't going to make that much of a difference, so no. I, I'm, I think we're okay getting the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you are able to acquire it as such. Does anyone have anything else that they would like to do in town before you depart, uh, heading towards the Witchlight Marshlands? I think Danan already showed off his hammer to Danan. I believe Blades. he did. Correct. Okay. Uh, Never mind. And you showed it off to Kelpip. Yeah. Oh, um, I would like to go talk to Kelpip. Certainly. You're able to do so um, at some point during this day while your cart is being worked on. Yeah. Um, he, he agreed to in his normal magnanimous fashion. And uh, what can I do for you? First, um, um, I I explained to him about um, the the temple of the Raven Queen we found, and I show him uh, we found these crates from the ODMC there, but the symbols look different than yours. I just thought you might want to see. I like the look for me. Um, Doctor Boomcraft's been doing his trade for a long time. He might have some idea. So what's going on with him? Um. Or he could reach out to his contacts and various different ports of call. Mm -hmm. The temple sounds mighty unnerving. Um, I'd be uh, worried about your friend. Lost an eye? Doesn't sound mm -hmm. like a... I don't know. Doesn't sound great. Yeah, uh, we're working on it, but... We all, we made it back. I just thought you'd want to know. I I didn't think the ODMC got that far out there, and it seemed old. I mean, they do trading all over the continent. Um, I I thought Kelpip was part of the ODMC. No. Oh. No, you you want Doctor Zillin Boomcraft. Um, okay. He's the representative here in 
out of thorn for them. Um, his shop is just around okay. uh, the edge there. Um, Never north, mind, I got it mixed up. I got, mix, I got it totally mixed up. Yep. Oh, sorry, Gelfip. Didn't mean to bother you. Not to worry. I can look into it for you, um, if you'd be wishing. Um, but Sure, I guess. You you got a lot of knowledge. I mean, o the ODMC trades to the far side of the mountains, too. Although, from what I understand, rather infrequently. Travels long. A lot of the business is between... Uh, if I recall correctly. Um, can I um, find the answer? Here, uh, Amsker, Bergenhold, and then uh, sometimes as far north as Fellhold Refuge, and I think uh, the most recent far, far north um, expansion was up to uh, the Rava Bacor Bay. Uh, but that freezes okay. over in the winter. So, uh, uncommon to trade up that way. I see. Well, let's, uh, I learned something I did. Didn't realize they got out that far, but it's good to know. I mean, they, yeah, they're shipping. They, they go everywhere, from my understanding. Well, uh, we're heading towards Armskirk, uh, probably tomorrow morning. You, you need anything from us? Um, I'm fine. I mean, be safe. Yeah? Stuff's happening, it's weird. What do you mean? It's, I've been feeling, uh, volatility in uh some of my work recently uh something's going on something big and i don't know what it is yet but uh you're saying you're i heard uh magic. a bit nothing terrible normal stuff magic acts up every now and then it's not a it's not like wood or steel that doesn't behave when you put it in place magic fights back there's a an aliveness to it you gotta wrestle it in sometimes. Just wrestles a little bit hot every now and then. Nothing unusual beyond that. It's just been happening recently. And I uh, uh, heard correctly from the conversations the previous night. Uh, I group y'all fixing up to go up to the Marshlands. And it wrestles a lot more there too, from what I hear. I see. Do you have anything that might help with that, or still figuring it out? No, but I have something that might help you, just in general. Uh, stick your thumb in your mouth. <laughs> Siegfried does it. Uh, you feel a tingling on your lip. Uh, yeah, well, that's fucking better. <laughs> oh, you mean the mustache? Yeah. Is uh, uh, that that little dwarven girl a uh, friend of yours? Uh, my, my uh, little sister. Ah, she won, a, she won one of my wands out of that bag toss. Oh, uh, she's pretty good at throwing. Yeah, she can make a mustache appear on someone for a day and a half, unless they uh, suck their thumb. Oh, <laughs> clever, clever. Nah. Kind of miss it. It's not very flattering. But... Good practical joke. Um, anything else I can do for you? No, uh, apologies. I, I I forgot you weren't part of the ODMC. But anyways, we'll, we'll see you around, Kelpip. Thanks, so. yeah. yeah, thanks for the help with the... I'm happy to help. Yeah, thanks for the help with the water. You came in a pinch. I drink it too. Easy, bits <laughs> you farewell. Presently, the group of you rest, recuperate, and set off for the Witchlight Marshlands on the far following morn. Um, for the purposes of my prep, uh, do you intend to go through the Pinwood as the crow flies directly to Armskirk? Or are you going to take the Hell slightly no. longer rate? No, we, I, I, we're going to go around. Yeah, I, I do not want to go through the Pinwood. Oh, fine. No fun. <laughs> All right. I learned my lesson. No more Frank. <laughs> Good session, everybody. Hope you enjoyed yeah. the Shield Meat Festival. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I had fun making up the games. <laughs>
Dunn and I, I expected you to at least participate in that competition once. I did not expect you to slap down another 50 silver. <laughs> I love it. I just played in character. Uh, I was just thinking what would have what he would have done. No. And he would have gone for a third round with more money. <laughs> Say nice again. I said he would have gone for a third round if he would have had more money. Oh, I thought Tenny said something. <laughs> I put on mute. Oh. I don't know. Maybe it was something in Donna's background. No worries. <laughs> All right. So, uh, um, yeah. The, are we meeting on the 24th? 24th. That is uh, up to the group. Um, I can run, but it'll be uh, Christmas evening for you, Marcus, correct? Yes. Yeah. I won't be able to try. No. Gotcha. Um, I suspect I might have some obligations, but they're usually later in the day. Um, but it could be earlier. So do we want to plan for... I'll have a problem with it. Okay, how about we plan on skipping on the 24th, and then we would... Okay. Is everyone good for the 31st, though? The New Year's Eve. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I should be yes. around the yes. right, So we'll, we'll plan for yes next week, the 17th, no on the 24th, and then yes on the 31st. Okay. I don't want to attend next week. Pardon? I will not be here next week. Oh, okay. Just like a plan. We will miss you for that. See y'all next week. Yeah. We all need to find out why Olus doesn't have children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, guys. Bye bye. Bye everyone.